The next thing you know, I'm down at Perth Zoo getting ready to shave a yak. Is it good that the default for percent free, which started off in as a percent free of 10 as the default way back in Oracle whenever, probably six, is still a default of 10 on all databases, including ADW. So ultimately, I want to talk about this in two particular ways. Is percent free 10 a good idea on a modern database? And in a general sense is why doesn't, if it's not a good idea, why doesn't Oracle change defaults as we move through releases to more reflect modern practices? Now I wanna take a little quick trip down memory lane here. Back in the day when I started first working with databases, uh, this, is the, this is what hard drives looked like for our servers. And they were all based on, effectively they came in little boxes like this. Uh, this is a Hewlett Packard, but I was, a, I was working with Sun. And they were, you probably remember those big, enormous, fat, scuzzy cables. We had scuzzy, fast, scuzzy, fast, wide, scuzzy, etc. Each cable got bigger and fatter and theoretically faster. But things like this were expensive, big and bulky. They're like sort of the size of like a shoebox. And this one was 4 gig. 4 gig was, you know, a pretty impressive drive. And then later when we went to 9 gig, which was, you know, insane. If you go back even before then, because when I first started working in IT, I hate sharing this information, I was a COBOL programmer on a mainframe. You know, Oracle didn't exist. And on mainframes, disks like this were an insane luxury. There was no such thing. On a mainframe, on the mainframe I worked on, we didn't even own it. We rented our mainframe. This is back in 1988. I think it was the last time I used our mainframe before I started getting involved with Oracle. And our mainframe, we used to pay $120 per gigabyte per month for storage. Plus those disks came in enclosures and we paid $1,100 per enclosure per month. And each enclosure held three gigabytes. You had three disks, each at $120 a month, that's $360 plus $1,100. So you're basically paying about $1,600 every month to have three gigabytes of storage. And so if you had 10 gigabytes of storage, you'd pay triple that, et cetera. It was insane because disk drives weren't this, this flippant thing we think about nowadays. Well, applications you built, you would try to as few inserts as possible. Generally, you would update data rather than insert new versions of data. And rest assured, you spent a lot of time making sure you cleaned up your mess. We always had, you know, very strict guidelines as to how long we would hold data, we make sure we get rid of it, because every row you deleted would ultimately end up you saving you dollars because disks and disk infrastructure was incredibly expensive. You fast forward to today, and I can buy an 18 terabyte hard drive for $600. So rather than 122 gigabytes a month, you do the maths and it works out as three cents per gigabyte and not per month, like it's forever. And they don't come in enclosures. So your total price, instead of being $1,500 for three gigabytes per month, it's now three cents per gigabyte forever. And so disk space is a non-issue nowadays, generally on almost all infrastructure. As a result, the mindset, I think, of all projects has changed. When you come out to archiving and removing old data, most projects I work on nowadays work like this. Your project goes live at a certain time, and whenever it goes live, the archival of data phase is sometime in the future. You know, that, that's, that's the next phase of the project that we'll hope to get to at some stage in the future, but it's low priority. When you release version two of your application a year down the track, obviously the time in which you would now tackle the archival phase has approached. But of course, what do you do? You just push that out. And so, um, you know, McDonald's theory of archival, if your project is at, uh, is at version N, then the archival project is N plus one for all versions of N. It's as simple as that. We so rarely archive information now because it's complex, it's hard, and often people simply say, why don't we just get more disk you know, archival is now an afterthought. Thus, the uh, traditional way of let's do not many inserts, lots of updates, and lots and lots of deletes to make sure our disk space doesn't get sort of consumed. Well, no one deletes anymore. We just don't bother. We don't do many updates, and we just we keep adding more and more data to our systems. Systems have become very insert driven because the the mindset of, of modern applications is there's probably some value in that data, no matter how old or out of date it is. So we may as well keep it because it, the cost of keeping it is very low. So let's keep it just in case. 
What that means is, and one of the things I recommend to people if they're starting on applications where they'll probably just be loading data all the time, is create your tables with percent free equals two. That's, that's generally my default now when I'm using for a table. I don't like going percent free zero because percent free two means I'm using 98% of the available space in my block, but I'm leaving a little bit of room for maybe the occasional update in case there's a data patching or stuff like that. I'm not gonna end up with a migrated row. And also I'm making sure that just in case I have a few concurrent transactions on my table, then there'll be enough room for the intro to transaction list, the ITLs to grow. Uh, you get two by default in a block, but I want to make sure that I'm, you know, maybe I need to grow to three or four. So just even that little bit of overhead, that 2% of free space, I think is probably a really suitable default for the vast majority of applications that we build nowadays. To answer the first part of the question, is percent free 10 a good default? I think for most modern applications, I would be leaning more toward two, except for those particular cases where we have some sort of divergence from that recommendation. So one of the examples is, if I've got really static old data, I'm never going to touch again, I'd probably either load it with percent free zero or compress it with percent free zero, because that's automatic when you compress the data and leave it alone. There are obviously you know, exceptions to the rule, but for me, percent free two seems a reasonably good starting point for most applications. But as I stress, just because it's a default doesn't mean it's a cast iron rule. If I've got rows that I know are going to grow, I'm going to bump up my percent free. If I've got lots of transactions, I'm going to bump up my percent free. But hopefully that answers the first part of that question. What do I think a sensible default is for percent free in modern applications? I think two. The second part is, well, if that seems a relatively plausible explanation, why doesn't Oracle just do that? Why don't we make the default of two for all you know, new databases coming out? And that brings me on to a topic called yak shaving. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term yak shaving, let me explain best with a demo. Let's say I wanna wash my car. I want to wash my car, but I can't. You know why? Because the hose is broken. And the problem is to fix the hose, I need to go to the hardware store. And to go to the hardware store is a pain because it's on the other side of the freeway, which has tolls. And so now I've got to pay tolls. So rather than do that, I'd rather take public transport, but I don't have, you know, I don't use public transport, therefore I don't have all the appropriate stuff. But my neighbor, he catches public transport all the time. So I could probably go and borrow his public transport card, you know, to make it easier. I don't really want to go see my neighbor though, because I, my son borrowed one of his cushions the other day and unfortunately the dog tore the cushion apart. And so it's missing some you know, hair inside it too, and I need to repack that cushion. That cushion needs to be repacked with yak hair. So the next thing you know, I'm down at Perth Zoo getting ready to shave a yak. That's the term yak shaving. And the concept is to achieve something, often you end up having to do something totally unrelated in order to work your way back to the original goal. And when it comes to setting defaults in the database, it's a bit like yak shaving in the sense that so many things have to be done or changed to do what seems the most trivial change. Let me give you an example of why I believe we really, it's so much harder to change a default than you might think. Most people, when they create a table, don't bother with percent free. They just do create table. Maybe they'll put a table space in. Therefore, almost all the tables out there in the world at the moment probably have percent free of 10, which means they look a bit like this. Now, if we change the default to percent free, say, two, then we can now get those extra three rows inside our blocks. Therefore, there's a good chance that people will be, in the main, happier. If we change from 10 to two as a global default for all versions of the Oracle database coming out in the future, there's a good chance people will be happier. There's an excellent chance they won't be happy because they won't even notice. The vast majority of people who don't set percent free are blissfully unaware about percent free 10 and why it's wasting 10% you know, of a block space. They're just unaware, they don't care. So yes, we actually improve the data density. The question of whether people will be dramatically happier, I think is dubious because those people that already know about this are setting it anyway. Those people that don't will be none the wiser. But let's say we have set percent free to two as a global default for all new systems. Up until now, people have been updating rows and even if they were unaware of percent free 10, have been lucky. As they make rows larger, those rows haven't been migrated because there's always been that 10% free space. Now, the systems that actually do still update lots of rows and make them larger, well, now you've got unhappy users because all of a sudden they've got a migrated row issue. 
I happily concede the same argument applies here. If they were blissfully unaware about percent free 10 and percent free 2, they're more likely to be blissfully unaware of row migration and row chaining. They're probably unlikely to even notice the difference. However, one thing they will notice is let's say in a system where we have percent free 10, people have a lot of concurrent transactions. Well, if I've got a lot of concurrent transactions on a block, they'll all work fine because percent free 10 lets the ITLs, the interested transaction list, grow to match that level of concurrency. All those transactions are going to work just fine. If I've changed the default to be percent free too, all it takes is one customer who has four or five or six concurrent transactions on a block, and all of a sudden they've got locking problems. Now, whether they're blissfully ignorant of percent free 10 or not, that they will notice, and they will notice huge because all of a sudden, system, something that worked before is now getting row lock contention, and they're thinking, I'm not even changing the same rows. It's a mystery to them, but they're having locking problems. These are the kind of people that will absolutely lose their mind because you know they'll be on Twitter. Rest assured, they'll be on Twitter. They'll be screaming at Oracle and Mike Dietrich, who's the upgrade PM. I upgraded my database and it broke my application. You know, upgrade sucks, yada, yada, yada. Enormous risk in changing what is a simple default to what will probably suit most people because all you need is a couple of people where they don't understand the implications of this and they will absolutely lose their mind in a public forum because for them, it's simply I upgraded and the world went to pot. Maybe we had a parameter now saying, what do you want the percent free default to be? So maybe we introduce this in 26C or 28C, etc. So you have a new parameter. What do you want the percent free default to be? And you choose to two, but other people can set it back to 10 if they want to. The first thing that happens there is people go, oh, too many parameters. Oracle, too many parameters, it's too complex, yada, yada, yada. You will have noticed that Oracle has been going the opposite direction for the last five years. We're trying to get less and less parameters that you need to tune because the database should be a nice self-managing, self-easy thing to install and manage. This goes in the opposite direction. Oh, maybe we make a hidden parameter then. Maybe that's the solution. Therefore, it still looks like we have less parameters. We have a new hidden parameter, which will do it. What's going to happen then is the next time you run an AWR report or an ASH report and it says, okay, parameters modified with this container, you'll see that there's a percent free default there that's now hidden. It might be two, it might be 10, but whatever it is, it's going to show up. Next time you try to log an SCNSR and you're logging a problem which has absolutely nothing to do with percent free, there's a good chance support are going to say, well, we noticed that hidden parameter you've tweaked. Can you please reproduce your problem? without that parameter set. And guess what? Next thing you're on Twitter again. Oh, my Oracle support, everything's so hard. It was so complex talking to Oracle support, etc. I'm not begrudging people's desire to have defaults changed. But the reality is adding the tiniest default we want to change has huge implications. And the risk portfolio for customers is massive because all you have to do is impact a couple of customers in a negative way. And the backlash is huge. And yeah, that's not something where any of us want to be. We do our best to change defaults as safely as possible. And I make no claim that we get it right all the time, but we do. I'll give you some examples. Undo management. We could safely say that back in the Oracle 9 timeframe, the number of people who were actively and very aggressively and carefully monitoring their rollback segments and choosing, remember the rollback segments parameter where you listed all the segments and which ones were online and offline and then you had transactions per rollback segment, et cetera. No one was doing that. Everyone pretty much went with the defaults. So it was very safe for us to say, look, we're gonna take undo management and make it automatic because most people are not doing any kind of manual undo anyway. And this is actually gonna be a better solution. So this was a change of defaults and generally everyone prospered. Here's another one for more recently in 12.2 when we introduced private statistics for global temporary tables. It was nigh on impossible to have good stats for a global temporary table because they were across all sessions. And the whole premise behind a global temporary table is private data per session. Therefore, we could not think of a single scenario where it would make sense to have a single set of stats for all instances of a global temporary table. And so forth, we made private stats the default when it came in in 12.2. Once again, I think an intelligent use because the existing use was fundamentally flawed. I'm not claiming we get it right all the time. Also, remember in 
we went with this new default system. The two kinds of adaptive optimizer stats both defaulted to true. This was probably a mistake in our part. We were perhaps too aggressive in going for that default. And one thing I'm particularly proud of is Oracle said, look, we made a mistake, we'll walk that back. And in 12.2, that second parameter got set to false as a much more sensible default. We try always put sensible defaults in place where we think regression risks are very, very low, or the benefit of having this new default massively outweighs the previous feature. But I suppose what I'm trying to say is the reality is simply tweaking a default, given that we've got 30 years of Oracle customers out there, is nowhere near as trivial as you might think. So hopefully you'll um, cut us some slack in that line. Mm -hmm.